I have built an entire YouTube channel around the basic things around your home or in your car that the average person without a special skill set can do on their own. But there are limits. There are some things that require a knowledge base or access to materials that only a licensed professional is going to have. There are some things that aren't financially worth it by the time you buy all of the tools and specialty equipment that you would need. There are some things that are just downright dangerous to do yourself, or in some cases, depending on where you live, borderline illegal. And then there are some things that you could do yourself, but would take a hell of a lot longer than someone who does it every day for a living. One of those things that I am not going to do myself is change out this water heater. We've gotten 18 years off of this water heater, which is an exceedingly long time, but it has recently started to corrode and it's starting to leak a little bit, so we know that it's on its way out. I have done some plumbing related videos before. Changed out the flapper and the fill valve in toilets, I've fixed drippy sinks, I've exchanged faucets, but this isn't one I want to tackle on my own. If I do it wrong and the house floods, the insurance company is not going to cover my home DIY hack job on a water heater. Luckily for me, my friend Matt Irons actually owns integrated plumbing solutions here in my local area, and so he's going to come over today and help us out. And I'm basically just going to stand around and ask a lot of questions. <laughs> water my plants with it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can I keep that stand? You can, yeah. Awesome. Oh, we'll put a piece of wood on it and oh, call it a table. Oh, we're going to throw it away. <laughs> I'm do something with that. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's nice. For sure. Cool. And there she goes. Bye, old girl. They're in there right now doing this, and I gotta tell you, I'm really glad I didn't try to do this myself. The number of little parts and pipes they've had to change, and the tools that they have that are specialty, that I wouldn't have any other reason to have other than for this, I don't think it would have been worth it to do it myself. Everything they just did in a couple of hours would have taken me days and a ton of cursing. And you know, there was a lot of things on this that you wouldn't realize you were going to have to deal with when you initially buy it. It's not always as easy as just popping the old one out and putting a new one in. For instance, we got a 50 gallon tank and we used to have a 40 gallon tank. 50 gallon tank was actually a little bit cheaper because they manufacture a lot more 50 gallon tanks than 40 gallon tanks. So the manufacturing cost is a little bit less. And the gas line on the old one started up higher because we had it up on a rack. So they had to put in a new gas line because the old one was just too short. Now, they also replaced the thermal expansion tank, which was good because this one was about three and a half years old. So it was nice that they threw that in. And he moved the shutoff valve from below the expansion tank to above it. And apparently that's a better situation. I'm still trying to work out the mechanics of that in my head. He explained it a lot better than I did. If you came in and you turn this valve off for whatever reason, yeah. you're isolating your expansion tank from where the water's being heated. Okay. So it basically makes this useless oh. if you were to turn this off. Okay. So if you turn that off, like say you were going out of town or whatever, right. you know, so you, you always want this above, that way when it isolates, it isolates your expansion tank is still expanding oh, with okay. the water heater. Oh, did they so, do that wrong originally? It, it's or? just the way it was done originally, yeah. Okay. But no big deal. Okay. All no right. big deal. Thank We're you. just going See, ahead and fix it. And also, because this one was a little bit taller, they didn't put it on a rack at the bottom, which means that these pipes had to be extended a little bit farther down so that the whole thing would fit properly. And that would have been a really difficult thing for me to work out and figure out on my own. Now, something else that I learned from Matt today is that if you're going from something like a 40 or 50 gallon tank, which is typical in a lot of homes, to something really big like a 75 or 80 gallon, then the likelihood is that these connection pieces here on the top are going to be set wider, which means that these pipes have to be fitted differently to fit into those connections, which means that you're going to have to change the orientation of these copper pipes, which gets into a pretty big project. Something else I learned is that the vent openings on these things, especially with gas heaters at least, uh, are usually three inches unless you have really high BTUs in your new one, in which case they are 
often four inches, which means you have to change all of this vent pipe as well which is yet another undertaking because that can extend way up into your walls. One last thing about changing it out yourself is what are you gonna do with the old one? Now, if anyone has good success stories on doing this themselves, please comment it below because I would love to hear it. They're in there right now. Hey, hey Matt, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? I've had leaks with just pipe dope and I've had leaks with just Teflon, but I've never had leaks with both. Ah, okay. I do whatever you gotta do to make sure that sucker doesn't leak. <laughs> and you destroyed a perfectly good fort box. Dang it! That's what my kids say. <laughs> I know. Bye bye, old girl. <laughs> <laughs>